So today we want to talk about uh, AMD's Ryzen Thread Ripper 2. And I don't even know if they're using the word Ryzen with Thread Ripper 2 now. I don't have the package here in front of me, but the Thread Ripper, in case you didn't know from AMD, is AMD's way of providing lots and lots of cores. And so it's meant to compete with Intel's high core count 12 and 16 core processors and do it at a much more economical level. And this is really great for people doing video editing, 3D rendering, things like that. But when it comes to gaming or flight simulation, it doesn't usually translate all that well because flight simulators and games typically depend on the fastest, fastest core, single threaded performance. Now X-Plane will leverage more than one core, and so the way the performance works with X-Plane is X-Plane likes for you to have about four cores, and then after that it really doesn't care if you have any more than that, and it just wants those cores to be as fast as possible. As many gigahertz as you can get, single threaded performance, being king and again it does like to have about four cores so the fact that the Threadripper has 16 probably isn't going to make a whole lot of difference now the processors I tested and compared I used the 8700K which we use quite a bit it's Intel's fastest gaming CPU and you can expect the performance of the 8600K which is just below that one which we actually that's the one we recommend for price reasons to perform almost identically and then we used an i5-8500 which is kind of an upper middle uh, i5 and it's not overclocked it's just a standard you know clocked chip it does have a turbo frequency then we used a Ryzen 2600X that's the second generation Ryzen 2 is what they're calling it I think or either second generation Ryzen I don't know AMD's naming conventions are weird just as weird as Intel's uh, and then lastly, we used a uh, Threadripper 2950X. Now, to run through core count on those, the, all the Intels are six core processors. Uh, the i7 hi having something called hyper threading, which you can Google if you don't know what that is. And then again, of course, the Threadripper having 16 cores with hyper threading. So, with regards to pricing, um, I had to normally you just look at the cost of the chip right and just say well this chip provides you know such and such performance for this amount of dollars but with Threadripper thrown in we have to factor in the cost of the motherboard and the cost of the power supply and we'll talk about a little bit about that in a moment but uh, as far as the chips go the 8700k is about $350 the um, i5-8500 is around uh, $200. The 2600X, which is the 6-core um, Ryzen 2, is right about $229-ish. And then the Threadripper 16-core from um, AMD is going to be $900. So there's a significant jump there. Um, the fastest chip from Intel, the fastest chip in this, this whole thing is 350, and then the Threadripper is, you know, 900. And again, I know gaming is what this is not made for. It's not made for gaming. I understand that. So no need to put in the comments that I'm using it improperly. It's just an experiment to see what happens. Now, with the Ryzen... Um, chip you also have to use a special motherboard an x399 motherboard which cost about two to three times what an intel a comparable intel board would cost and that's why we're factoring in the cost of the motherboard same with the power supply and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the power supply now but the the power supply needs of threadripper are a good bit different as well Okay, so now I want to talk about why we're factoring in the cost of the motherboard and the processor and the power supply instead of just concentrating on the chip because the chip is the main variant here, right? Right. But the uh, chip isn't the only part of the equation that, aff that affects the price because these Threadripper boards are quite expensive. Um, you can get a really nice Intel uh, overclocking motherboard for in the $150 range, maybe even less. 
Whereas the, these Threadripper boards start in the 300s. Uh, this one happened to be 361 and it's sort of towards the bottom end price-wise. Um, so we're factoring in the cost of the motherboard because that, that bumps things up a good bit. Also, the power supply, you'll notice here that there are two wires going to power the CPU. So every motherboard these days has auxiliary power connections going to power the CPU socket. But on every other board in general, there's only one. But on these Threadripper boards, there are two because this Threadripper socket can draw, I think, close to 500 watts if you're running the 32 core version. So you have to have a power supply that, can, that has two of these CPU power connections, and those are only present on the around 1,000 watt and up power supplies. So that's why we're factoring in the cost of the power supply, and you also need more power as well. There's also an auxiliary power connection going to the PCI Express slots, which you don't typically find in other motherboards. Um, they can be in some, but it's not typical. So you have to make sure you have a power connection for that, and then the one, of course, going to the graphics card. So that sort of explains why we're factoring in the cost, not only of the chip, but the uh, motherboard and the uh, power supply. And lastly, we're not going to ding AM, the, the Threadripper on this, but you will need a more robust cooling solution for the Threadripper, but I chose not to include that difference as well. But you might need an extra hundred just for your cooling solution. Okay, so now let's talk about cost. As I mentioned, we're going to factor in the cost of the processor, the motherboard, and the power supply into our equation. So I'll put the, the pricing up there now. You'll see the CPUs are fairly reasonably priced until you hit the Threadripper at $900. Um, Motherboard-wise, um, you know, you're in the hundred and something dollar range until you hit the Threadripper at 361. Power supply, you can get, if you know what you're doing, you can find a good power supply for about 75 bucks that will do a good job on uh, Intel or Ryzen 2, um, you know, system. But with the Threadripper, you're going to probably spend at least $150 to get something adequate to power that thing and to have those two power connections for the CPU. And so when you compound all that and you add it up, you're looking at $1,400 for the Threadripper just to get the motherboard, power supply, and the processor. And that is pretty significant when you consider the all the other three are in the $350 to $550 range. That's a very significant difference in performance, excuse me, in price. So let's take a look at performance and see how that does for us. Okay, so let's talk about performance. Um, of course, not unexpectedly, the i5 80, excuse me, i7 8700K came in at the fastest, and it was uh, 88 frames per second on average. We did our testing on a 2560 by 1440 monitor, which is uh, sort of in between uh, 1080p and 4K. Um, we thought that was a, a good resolution to go with, and we did them at sort of medium high settings. All the tests were run at the same settings with the same GTX 1080 graphics card. So again, the 8700K came in at 88 frames per second. The i5 8500 came in at 76, which was uh, very good, um, especially considering its price. And we use that in a lot of our budget systems because it's such a good performer, along with the i5 8400, which sits just below it. The Ryzen 2 2600X did okay. Um, it got 66 frames per second and um, still not where you, where you really want to be because it cost actually more than the i5-8500. Um, so it's not as good a value as the 8500. And then we have the Threadripper which is only at 57 frames per second. As we mentioned earlier, this is a processor for heavily multi-threaded stuff like video editing, 3D rendering, not really for gaming or simulating, but it's still a fun experiment. And um, as you'll see there, it was the worst performer because it just doesn't have the per-thread performance of the other chips. 
Now, um, when we look at the top performer and the bottom performer, the 8700K versus the 2950X Threadripper, it actually represents 35%. So it's a the 8700K is 35% faster than the Threadripper. Yet, the Threadripper costs two and a half times the price. Um, so you, for two and a half, so if you're going to buy a Threadripper for X-Plane, you're going to have to pay two and a half times as much for 35% less performance doesn't really add up. So um, if you're going to buy a Threadripper, I certainly hope you have other uses for the Threadripper besides X-Plane. It'll still run X-Plane. It'll do a decent job of it, but it's certainly not the chip to use for X-Plane. So that's, that's kind of the performance numbers. And uh, let's take a look next at the performance per dollar numbers. So when considering the number of dollars you have to spend for every frame per second you get, let's take a look at each chip. And again, we're factoring in the chip, the motherboard, and the power supply on this. So for Threadripper, uh, you're spending almost $25 to get one frame per second. Um, when you're considering the Ryzen 2 2600X, it's about $6.55. The 8500, the i5-8500 is $4.61, and the i7-8700K is at $6.31. So, really the best two values are going to be the Intel. The Ryzen 2 isn't terrible. Um, but, you know, if you want the very, very best performance, then that would be the i7-8700K. Or its, its brother, the i5-8600K, which we actually highly recommend. I think I mentioned that earlier. So, when it comes to Threadripper, um, don't buy it solely to run X-Plane. Please have another use for it, like video editing or 3D rendering, something that can leverage all of those cores, and then you'll be happy with your purchase. And you can still run X-Plane on it. It just won't be quite as fast as you something you could get from Intel or, you know, the Ryzen 2 uh, as well.